Welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your weekly encouragement. Well, this week I've been thinking about rankings. I have two of my own kids who are looking to college. One who's almost ready to go and one that is just beginning to search exactly what they want to do. And that got me thinking because we spend all this time looking at college majors and which college is best for our student based on academics or the program they want to go into or what it costs. And there's all these sites on the internet that will rank these things. I started to think about that because we rank so much in our lives. Our favorite bands, our favorite like restaurants, our favorite movies of all time. We can come up with lists all day long. So that got me to kind of consider how does God list us? How does he see us and our spirituality and what it means to be great in the kingdom? And you probably guessed it. That takes us to Matthew chapter 18. The disciples have exactly the same question. We're only doing five verses today. We'll start right here at verse one. It says, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and said, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? They asked exactly the question that we're asking this morning, which is who is the greatest? God, when it comes right down to it, if you had to pick a top, who is the top? And I think you might be surprised at Christ's answer. So Christ looked to the side, verse two, and he says, he called to a child to himself, and he set him before them and he said, truly I say to you, unless you are converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself as a child, he's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, we have to start with humility. And on top of that, our humility has to be a childlike humility. The way a child comes to the Father, that's how the Father wants us to come to Him. Now he goes on and he expands on this just a little bit. He says, whoever then humbles himself as a child, he's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 5, whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. Whoever causes one of these little ones to believe in me to stumble, it'd be better for him to have a heavy millstone hung around his neck and be drowned in the depth of the sea. So the second bit that he expands upon is to say that those who receive a child who is seeking the kingdom, just as you or I might, is receiving Christ himself. That is huge. So often, I think young people are kind of looked over. They're sort of a hassle, especially when it comes to like formalized church settings. They're loud and they're messy and they have questions and they're just in the way in a lot of ways from an adult's perspective. Christ is exactly the opposite. We need to receive those little ones who have that childlike faith. On top of that, not only is it like receiving Christ, but those who cause them to stumble, who put strange bits of theology or questions in their mind or put them out because they're just in the way, it's better for them to have a millstone hung around their neck and be thrown in the sea. That's pretty heavy. So my encouragement this week is very simple. One, if you're concerned about how God sees you, you might want to check your humility. Are you as humble as God has called us to be? And the second thing is, if you haven't had the chance to sit down and listen to a child talk about their faith and hear that humanity, you need to do that. Make some time for those young people in your life that are part of the faith that want to explore what Christianity has for them, listen to them because not only can you instruct, but there's a huge chance you can learn from their faith. I know that I do. Well, God bless. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. We'll see you next week.